Hi guys, it's John from BD. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Welcome to episode 25 of my Celica GT4 restoration series. And today we're looking at the fuel system. So we're going to be refurbing the fuel tank. We're going to be running uh, the brake and the fuel lines from the front all the way to the back. Boom, boom. We're going to be fitting the tank, putting the sender in, and then putting absolutely no fuel in it because no one can afford fuel anymore, can they? <laughs> right, here we go. So here we are with the fuel tank. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Someone sprayed a load of yak on it in the past. Obviously the place where it goes is on the seams here. And I'm a little concerned. Can you see me here? It's a scraper in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the wire wheel on the grinder and lightly go over this first and have a look and see whether it's savable, see how we get on. Um, these bits are all looking a bit scabby. You can buy the fuel pump brackets and sender, and um, you can also buy the fuel filler pipe neck, or whatever you wanna call it. So, uh, but we'll see because once it's all out of blast, it might not be too bad, I and mean, then we can re-epoxy it. Right, let's have a look. I think I've got away with it. We're going to send it out to our new sandblasters. Big shout to AB Sandblasting. And um, it should come back pretty quickly. And I can get it epoxied, seamed, and then painted. Boom, that's another one marked off the list. I was going to get a new filler neck. And they're not available at the moment. Get a new fuel pump carrier that's coming. Breather's not available at the moment. So we're gonna have to just make do whatever we can. Brilliant. Okay, here we go. The tank has now been all repaired as best I can with a special epoxy resin petrol patch stuff and then I've, I've re-epoxy primed it afterwards not that there was any big leaks or anything but just while it's out I thought it best to be safe it was looking very thin on some of these seams a little bit round here and quite a bit down here Excuse the state of the paint booth. I'm about to give it a service, but I thought before I do give it a service and put all new protective film on the walls, I'll get all the horrible jobs out of the way and this Raptor stuff sprays everywhere. So, tank's ready. It's all epoxied and ready for the Raptor liner, which we're gonna come to now. Right, Raptor tough protective coating. Okay, I've only gone for one litre. I haven't actually used this before. It's basically a 2K stone chip, really. Um, it is, I believe it's polyurethane, and it is uh, resilient to fuel, which is also a bonus. So you can spray it on a few different ways. You can spray it on with a stone chip gun. Obviously not this stone chip gun, because this one's covered in wax oil. You can also thin it down a bit and spray it with a 2.5. Look at that. Boof, boof, boof. Or you can thin it down even more and spray it with a 1.8, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to probably thin it down, spray it on um, a little thinner than I normally would with the 2.5, because then what's going to happen is... See, it's easy just to spray this on really thick. Boom, yeah, it's on. Look, it's protected, but... I like it a little bit thinner. I like it to really penetrate into all those seams. So I might try first coat with this, a nice thin coat just to penetrate and to adhere to the surface properly. And then if I want a bit more of a textured finish, I'll go on with this. Right, and so we'll have a, we'll open the box up a little bit. Let me just oh, 
do this with one hand while I'm doing this. So, a lot of people do the underbodies with this, but like we spoke about in a previous um, episode, um, I have heard of it cracking. It's not very flexible. So, um, I did it with a rubberized paint underneath. So, you've got your Raptor liner here, which is like your stone chip in black. And then you add in the hardener. You literally pour it in a bottle, mix it up and get ready to spray. But what I'm going to do, I'm not going to mix the whole litre in one go. Because I don't quite know how much I'm going to use. And I'm a bit of a tight ass. So I'm going to measure it out in the cup. It's three to one. But I think when you measure it in a cup, it's not quite three to one. You've got to check the TDS, the technical data sheet. So I'll get mixing. I'll check the consistency. And then I'll decide what I'm doing. Because, you know, let's make it up as we go along. Right. So I thinned it down a little bit. Just been practicing on here. Going on pretty wet. So I'm going to do a spray out card. So for future reference, I've got it thinner, spray through this and through the uh, stone chip gun as well. Have a look. Yeah, so there you go. Looks all right, doesn't it? It's um, a nice textured finish. It's high gloss. I'm not quite sure it's going to dry, whether it's going to dry to gloss or dry to satin. But um, good textured finish. And what we're going to do is now we're going to spray it on the tank, get it on, in all the seams and the um, round the filler neck and all the, you know, high seepage areas first, and then we'll go from there. All right? Well, here we are, three days later. I just let it just sit here and fully cure because there's no way I can put it down anywhere without putting any pressure on anything. I don't want to mark it or rip it, but... I'm impressed with the Raptor. Very easy to spray, goes on. Um, obviously, I could have sprayed it thicker than I have done. Could use a Schultz gun, but I ended up using a 2.5. It gives a nice finish, but it doesn't cover quite as well as it would do if I put it on a bit heavier. As you can see down here, these are some of the petrol patch epoxy I put on there. Just, it was just seeping out of these areas. So um, obviously that's all sorted. But remember that is the top of the tank. So the only time it's gonna be under pressure is when it's completely full or when fuel's sloshing around, but <laughs> With the price of fuel at the moment in the UK, well, worldwide, this is never going to be full, this tank. To £1.70 odd a litre. That's nearly two euros a litre or two dollars or whatever. Right, well, there we go. Impressed. And another job marked off a list. Right, so here we have all the bits for the fuel tank. Well, most of them. So we've got... The fuel tank straps, which bolts to these, go on there, bolts to the car. The ins rubber insulation bits that go on there, you can see where we've had corrosion, where water and stuff gets trapped between them. We have got the vent breather that goes on top of the tank. We have got some um, flexible rubber fuel pipes, which someone has bodged on. We have got more insulating bits and some other bits. Uh, we have got some new gaskets for the sender unit. We have a fuel pump and we have the main tank pump bracket, whatever you want to call it. Now, we have, well, we have, I have got myself an uprated fuel pump for it. I am, before anyone says anything, I am waiting for the rubber gasket that goes underneath, you know, this one. I've, um, 
Well, I've misplaced it, put it somewhere, a bit silly, really. So, this isn't looking the best. It's damaged. These pipes are meant to be longer. Uh, now, whether the pipes have corroded in the past and some, well, that is what's happened, or got damaged in some way, and someone has cut them off and then joined them to the original hard pipes with these flexible pipes. Okay, so... You can buy a new one of these for about £100, dollar, euro, it's all the same. The problem I've got with buying a new one is it will look lovely and it will do the job and it'll be great. And these pipes here will be extended and to the correct factory location. Great. But along with that, you also need another pipe that goes, the pressure pipe from the pump goes and then joins a hard pipe so this is 100 i think it's about 110 actually delivered and then the pipe is about 70 so it's 170 pounds dollar us whatever um to basically repair this to replace this pipe so what i'm going to do is i've decided is i'm going to strip all this down even though i've rewired the pump in and all that strip it down uh, i'm going to sandblast it and then this is the pipe that's damaged because this is the one that's under pressure this is the important one if you bodge this you see no one there's not even a flare on that someone's just cut it off and stuck paper over it if you bodge this there's a chance you're going to start spraying fuel everywhere and on a massive restoration or any car spraying fuel everywhere isn't the best idea is it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to Cut this pipe off here, cut it off under there, drill the hole out, and we're going to make a new pipe to go in there, solder it up or weld it up, whatever it needs, dress it up, paint it, and then we will be done. The joys. So here it is, all repaired, new pipe put in, soldered braze whatever you want to call it there and i've just masked it up because i'm going to get some epoxy on the bare metal on the mating surface and all around here too looks good doesn't it let's get some paint on it all right so here we go it's all epoxy it's all painted it's all repaired you can see the pipe going through uprated fuel pump i know it doesn't look the neatest but it's absolutely secure insulated i'm going to put my new gasket on it I've made some new bolts, shaved them down, and we've got the breather to install, and then that's the pump and all the gaskets in the pipe work done. Okay, there we go. Gasket on, bolts in, Bolts in, boom. So here we have all the new pipes that have been painstakingly made front to back for the Celica. There is five in total. We have fuel pressure, we have a breather, we have a fuel return, and we've got the rear brakes. Um, they've all been done in silver nickel pipes, an absolute bugger to bend, but a lot more corrosion resistant to the usual copper. Very good. Excellent. Front of the car, all the way back to the rear. What an absolute nightmare. But it's done and worth doing when you look at the original pipes. If I bend that, that's gonna break straight away. Um, that's the main fuel one. The other ones for the brakes were just, they were just falling to bits, there was holes in them. So we're going to try and fit these. And I've also got all the connectors that have been re whatever. Um, the gold doesn't come out very well, but we had that with the other bolts, didn't we? Um, I'm missing one bracket. I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. Uh, get them on. And in order to do that, first job is remove the steering rack, which has only been roughly put in place. And while that's out as well, I've got new track rods, rod ends, and 
gaiters, boots, fur hats. So let's get going. So uh, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm here in work. I'm lying on the floor. Oh, check it out. And uh, struggling with brake pipes, fuel lines, whatever. Um, I've basically got them in the right position, kind of. They're going to need, you can see they're not perfect. They're going to need a little bit of tweaking here and there. And I'm having to do an intersection. So I go along and then I do the next one. Luckily, I've got a diagram of where all these clips go, all of these ones. Um, I am a couple missing. Now, I think if I remember correctly, a couple are really badly corroded. So I'm going to do what I can. Uh, we haven't finished the main fuel pump one there because we're having to modify it slightly because we've got a new sender, whatever. I'm going to have a piece of rubber pipe in there. So it's awkward, but they are looking rather sexy, if I do say so myself, especially with the zinc-plated brackets. So I'm going to struggle on. It's hard to film. I'm going to spin it round. Yeah, it's hard to film, but uh, it's looking really nice under here. It's a nice view. Let's have a look. Look. Oh, oof. Just fresh zincs and silver bits everywhere. Anyway, I'm going to crack on and um, hopefully the car won't fall on top of me. Right, so there we go. There's all the pipes in place. They still need a little bit of tweaking here and there. But um, what's an epic task? What we've got there and got it done. Now we can concentrate on the tank. Right, so I'm under the car and I've temporarily put the tank back in. Yes. And oh, I think I might have dropped a bit of a bollock. I've tried to bend this fuel pipe and I haven't done the best job of it, actually. And I think I might have pinched it in a couple of places. So what I've done is just in case... I have made a second piece, which is obviously going to connect to the tank just with a very short bit of a rubber pipe. And then if needs be, if I don't think this is good enough, it will just have to join back up here with another tiny little bit of pipe. And I've cut some flexible off for the return and for the breather. So I needed to measure the length and whatever. So. These two are going to be on flexibles and the main fuel pressure pipe that runs from a tank pressurised to the engine is going to be 98% um, zinc pipe just with a couple of connectors. We'll have to just put a flare up here or something. So um, I'm going to drop it down, connect up the flexi pipes for the vent and for the return, label them up so then we put it all back up it should be in place then for the duration. Right, let's get it out. It's so awkward getting a tank in and out on your own, on the floor. Anyway, right, so here we go. Here it all is. I haven't got any clips in stock at the moment. Bugger, so I'm gonna have to order some. Everything's connected, obviously, except for the main fuel pressure pipe. And yeah, it's all looking good. These are the flexies that are gonna run. So. They're cut over size, I've labelled them so they can just hang down so when the tank gets lifted up to place, they can just be connected to the, uh, the zinc pipes. Um, I've got a, just a little bit of wiring to do here because there was a bit of a dodgy wire someone's put in, but that can be done from inside the car. I'll solder a new piece in. And yeah, I think it looks really good. It was worthwhile shaving all them bolts down so they all fit. So what I'm gonna do now is, I am going to um, strap it up, not for the final time, but enough to keep it in place when we move the car around. And yeah, let's get it in. Another thing I'll point out is, because I don't know if I mentioned it earlier on in the video, but when you could see the tank had come back from the sandblasted, a lot of the corrosion and a lot where I had to uh, do a bit of work and put the petrol patch on was where these... Uh, rubber insulator patches are on the tank now these are here because it obviously the tank sits up against the bottom of the car and you don't want metal on metal rubbing so these are here as like an insulation to protect now the tank had been off before 
these hadn't been stuck on very well and basically what's happened is is moisture's got in there and sat there and had nowhere to go so when i've refitted these and made a couple of new ones i've used a proper pu adhesive on the whole of the underneath and all the way around to protect it so not only are we not going anywhere but nothing can get in there now either brilliant right okay um return and vent pipes are temporarily in place no clips on them yet or anything um let's recap where we've got up to and what we've done so fuel tank is in wiring is all poked through into the uh, boot area filler neck is in flexies are in we've just got to connect up the main fuel pump which obviously as i spoke about before is uprated we've got all the pipes in they need a bit of jiggery pokery but they're everywhere let's move around up to over here yeah all down here all the clips in all linked through to oh let's change it they are all linked through to the underneath of the car and i think you'd say that's a win wouldn't you it's been really fun doing this lying on a freezing cold concrete floor between christmas and new year but yeah so now because we want to get the car rolling the next job is going to be fitting this bad boy. And on that note, I'm going to leave it. Take it easy, guys. See you soon. Bye.